to be honest. I'm, I'm of course very happy because of meeting you here in New York, but let me start with a few words of one of your characters from the last book. A writer should never talk to journalists. Mm -hmm. <laughs> An interview is a devalued literary form. It simplifies things that should never be simplified. So, Mr. Oster, what about giving interviews? Well, I do feel that they don't accomplish a lot. On the other hand, um, we're in a very tough moment right now with publishing uh, in the United States and around the world with all these technological changes, the uh, economic depression, and uh, fewer books are being sold. And I feel that writers have an obligation to their publishers to help when they can. It's not that you have to do it every day, but a little bit now and then to make them happy, to know that you're, you're trying to help them just as they're trying to help you. So it's a matter of friendship more than anything else. But look, maybe we're going to have a great conversation and I'll, I'll change my mind after we're finished. So I would like to start the, the, this interview with uh, talking about the Sunset Park, as I said. Uh, I really admire the book, I must say. So Thank, you. The beginning. Thank you. And I was delighted, uh, if I can say like this, uh, by the first sentences. Uh, this is the moment when you present Miles, one of the characters. Mm -hmm. It means the way you're writing about the effects of the crisis. Mm -hmm. He's in, in Florida, there are empty houses all around, thousands of forgotten things everywhere, like uh, shoes and other things. And he's making photos of forgotten things. Uh, his colleagues are stealing the things. Yes. He doesn't. No. Mainly. Uh, and observing the America crisis uh, that spread all over the world almost in the last few years, I have never, tr this is my truly words, uh, I have never read such a great literary description of the crisis. So the America is on the edge nowadays. Uh, and was it the main reason that you decided to write this book? Well, it's a funny thing. Um, for years, I'd been walking around thinking about a novel that I wanted to write about someone who is kicked out of where he lives, someone dispossessed. And um, uh, I had toyed with it for, for a long time. And then one day I look up and the entire country is falling to pieces. Everyone is being dispossessed. And I realized that, no, it can't be just the story of one person, but of, of many people. And uh, so that was what launched me into it. The idea was there first, but then the situation changed in the culture and in the economy so that I understood how I was going to do it. And this is the first book I've ever written, which is, as we were saying before we started, about now with a capital N. Uh, the book was written in 2009 and, uh, and the book takes place in 2008 um, and into 2009. So I had never written um, a novel so close in time to the events that I was describing. I mean, usually there's a, there's a, a distance of five years, 10 years, 50 years. But this time, no, I wanted to be in the present. And that's why the book is largely written in the present tense as well. In your latest book, I think there are two or three main characters for me as a reader, which mm. is Miles, his father, mm. and this girl becoming woman, Pilar, a very yes. young one. Mm. Uh, but let me focus on Miles for the f uh, at the beginning. He's 28. He left his family and college. Uh, he's a vagabond somehow, moving from state to state, uh, mm. searching for work, not taking care of many things. I mean, mm. buying novels, the most necessary things, nothing else. But he's not run away just because of his youthful protest, I think. Many things happen in his life. And how would you prescribe Miles Heller to your Polish readers? What kind of character he is? Uh, a tormented person, uh, walking around with a tremendous sense of guilt over something that he did when he was 16 years old. Um, I won't go into it because, you know, people well, don't, haven't had a chance to read the book yet. But um, it's something so shattering to him that uh, he's, he's really, in a way, a kind of latter-day Dostoevskian character. He's doing penance. He's so mortified by the shame and guilt he feels that he's trying to atone for it by, by, um, by flagellating himself. And so he's, he's in a way a very noble character 
and at the same time crazy and unbalanced. Now I have to say about this book, you see, what I, what I really think is the core of it is that they're houses. Miles is working as a so-called trash-out worker in the beginning in Florida, which is cleaning out foreclosed houses that the banks have taken over, cleaning them up to, for the, to allow the banks to sell them. Um, so we, and then we have later on in the book, uh, Miles and a bunch of other young people squatting in an abandoned house in Brooklyn, in Sunset Park, which is the title of the book. It's a neighborhood in Brooklyn. Um, so we have houses. But then, in English, you see, we have this other word, home. And I don't know if you have the same kind of distinction in Polish. We have house is a physical object, a building. Just a place. Uh, just a place. A home, and sometimes people refer to houses as homes, is is a as a as a is an idea. It's about family. It's about having a place of your own. It's about a center to your life. And I think of this book as um, uh, an examination of houses and homes. And the home in this case is basically Miles and his family, his father Morris, his mother and stepmother. Um, and so they are somehow the emotional core of what, of what goes on in the story. So uh, the, the story of Miles' uh, family, as you said, is rather complicated. Parents are divorced. Yes. Each of them's got a f new family. Uh, mother is a famous actress. Yeah. Father is a well-known publisher, not doing well in the crisis time. No, he's a literary publisher, he's struggling, <laughs> struggling. There is a stepmother mm -hmm. suffering after the death of her only son. Uh, Many setbacks, but I was reading uh, this book also as a story of r some kind of reunification, which came just after many years of loneliness and of loneliness of each of those characters you, you're yes. writing about. Am I right? Yes, I agree. Uh, and in some sense, even though Miles is perhaps the central figure of the book, everything revolves around him, the other center is his father, Morris. I think Morris occupies the moral... Uh, core of the book. Uh, he's about 62 years old. He's, he's, he's seen a lot. He's done a lot. He's suffered through Miles' long absence. And uh, somehow Morris carries, carries the weight of all the uh, problems that, that are present in, in, in the novel, all the different characters, all the things they're going through. Somehow Morris is the, uh, is the center of that. Talking about Morris, that was uh, I prepared this question as the next one. The figure of father, or the, rather the absence of the father. There is not there. There is not something new in your book. It, it comes very often w w in your books, and uh, in uh, is a frequent part or the frequent theme of your novels. Uh, that, that's what I want to say. But what kind of the man the Morris is? How would you prescribe this guy? How would I describe him? I would I would say that he is um, a person. Um, who's very grounded. He's someone who, who, who lives in reality. He's not a, a, a fantasist. Um, he's someone who, who cares about literature. He spends his whole life publishing what he thinks are good books, valuable books. Uh, he has not made a lot of money. He's done all right. He, he's, he cares about his writers. He cares about his wife. He cares about his son. Um, and um, I, I think of him as a kind of solid character someone who can be beaten and he can fall down, but somehow Morris always manages to get up and, uh, and, and walk on. I mean, there's a moment in the book when he has pneumonia and he, he's very, very ill, but he recovers. He comes back and t you know, continues to try to keep his uh, struggling publishing company alive and at the same time treat his son with dignity. He's there for him but he doesn't want to uh, impose himself. There is also the death of close people which is surrounding him. Yes. Well, his parents and, and then um, the, 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 the author that he publishes, whose daughter has committed suicide. Um, well, these are the things that go on. And uh, I've lived long enough now. I suppose I was more or less Mars's age when I wrote the book. And I've lived through so many deaths and suicides and tragedies of one kind or another. And by the time you're 60, you know, it's, 
it's part of who you are. Okay, so as a reader of your books, as a person who watched your movies uh, directed by you, uh, I know that you're a person with a great imagination, that's for sure. But to be honest, do you really think that this kind of unique love, I know almost every love is unique, you must say, mm -hmm. these emotions between Miles and Pilar were or are possible? I mean, what's the role of this 18 years old girl? Well, she's actually 17, going on 18. Um, Yes, I think it's of course possible. Um, when the book was published here in America in 2010, um, I was surprised that a lot of people were alarmed by this love affair between a 28-year-old man and a 17-year-old young woman. Um, uh, to me, it doesn't seem so crazy. I mean, there are girls of 17 who are women. There are other girls of 17 who are not. Pilar is. She's um, very mature, she's very intelligent, and um, very focused. And um, I, d I just don't see the problem. I mean, to say one of our great intellectuals in America, Susan Sontag, was married when she was 17. Uh, no one seems to think this is such a terrible thing. Uh, but I guess the society has changed over the years to such a degree that the previous novel that I wrote, Invisible, which has a case of possible, it's, it's a little unclear whether it's true or not, incest between a brother and a sister. When I did interviews in the United States, nobody really asked me about it. It was not something anyone found outrageous. But this love affair between a 28-year-old and a 7-year-old shocked a lot of people. I can't understand why. We are now sitting in your house, in your house, in your home in Park Slope in Brooklyn. Uh, it's not so far from here, the Sunset Park. No, not, not at all. And both locations are present in your last novel. Uh, the atmosphere of the Sunset Park you created, I mean, this uh, old ruined house, the big cemetery there, is incredible. But would you be so kind to, for a moment, to be a guide for your Polish readers and just tell us what kind of place it's like this? Is Sunset Park? Uh, so, um, Sunset Park is uh, a neighborhood that stretches between about um, 15th Street to 60th Street in Brooklyn. Um, it, one border is, is the harbor, New York Harbor. So if you walk out there, you can see the Statue of Liberty in the water. Um, it is mostly a very poor place uh, with almost all, all immigrants. Um, again, many languages spoken. Uh, working class at best. A lot of the old warehouses and factories by the water are abandoned, just empty out. There used to be an army yard there that employed, uh, I don't know, 10 or 20,000 people, but that's all shut down. So there's a, there's a sense in Sunset Park of time having passed it by. It's a place that doesn't seem um, to have much of a future right now. Um, and therefore, because it is a poor neighborhood, it seemed like a likely place where these young people could find an abandoned house to, to live. And the truth is that I did find the house. And the house I was describing in the novel was a real place, which was abandoned, empty. And I found it on 34th Street, right across from the cemetery. Um, I took photos of it so that when I was writing the passages about the book, I could refer to the pictures and get all the details just right. Then, uh, my book came out in November 2010. National Public Radio wanted to do an interview with me. And they said, well, let's go out to Sunset Park and we'll, we'll do it there. And I said, well, let's go to 34th Street. We can look at the house. And it had been destroyed, demolished, carted away, gone. Nothing was left, not even a splinter. So the house no longer exists. And it was so eerie, I have to say, because just as Miles in the beginning is taking pictures of vanished things, well, the only thing that's left of the house are the photos I took of it. So I, feel, I felt that I was living inside my own book. It existed only in, uh, on your pages. Yes. Mm -hmm.